Hello, and welcome to the Census Workshop. This is Karim Abdel Latif, the host of this research spotlight episode. I'm very glad to introduce Anne Sophie Bashka and Stephanie Shella. Anne Sophie has obtained her master's and engineering degree from the TU Dresden and the ACPM Strasbourg as a double degree program and did her master thesis at the Boris Kovan Institute for Catalysis in Novosibirsk, focused on photocatalysis with titanium dioxide applied to organic synthesis. Stephanie has obtained her master's degree from the University of Stuttgart and the Queen's University as dual master's program in access to inertia enriched cyclic cell phones. And now they are PhD students in Morandi lab at ETH Zurich. Their current research is focusing on developing innovative synthetic methodologies for establishing new concepts in catalysis. Thank you, kind introduction. Today, we will present to you the work we have done in the Morandi group on chemodivergent C to N atom swaps in benzofluorens. Let's first start by introducing the concept, skeletal editing. Skeletal editing has emerged as an alternative to traditional peripheral editing. While traditional transformations alter the periphery of a structure of interest, core remodeling focuses on the skeleton of the molecule. In ring systems, three categories of skeletal editing can be distinguished. Single atom insertions expand the ring system, while single atom deletions contracted. Single atom swaps will place one atom for another. While the term has only been defined recently, reactions that can be considered as skeletal editing have been known since the late 19th century. Classical examples include the Beckman rearrangement or the Chamichan Denstedt rearrangement. Several protocols have been developed over the past five years, including nitrogen atom insertions, nitrogen deletions, carbon insertions, and carbon deletions. Single atom swaps are of particular interest with regard to the application industry. For example, drug discovery programs often systematically replace a CH unit with a nitrogen atom in a lead compound to check potential influence. Introducing a nitrogen atom into the drug skeleton has been shown to improve key pharmacological properties. As these two examples demonstrate, replacing a CH unit with a nitrogen atom can enhance both in vitro metabolic stability and potency. This is where single atom swaps come into play. In an ideal scenario, chemists would be able to exchange a CH group for a nitrogen atom in a single reaction without the need for time-consuming de novo synthesis, all while preserving the molecule's topology. This would enable efficient study of structure activity relationships in drug discovery programs. Recently, new C2N atom swap reactions have been reported in literature. In 2022, Burns reported a method that allowed for the conversion of aryl acides to aminopyridines using blue light and oxygen. The aryl to pyridine conversion is achieved by nitrogen insertion into the benzene ring, followed by oxidative carbon extrusion. Adding to this, the Levin group reported a transformation that enables the direct conversion of quinolins to quinazolins, starting from quinoline and oxides using LED light and ammonium carbamate as the nitrogen source. However, these methods require special functional handles or pre-functionalization, which limits their applicability in late-stage diversification. More recently, our group reported a strategy to leverage the innate reactivity of indoles to perform a C2N atom swap in N-alkyl indoles, allowing for the direct conversion of indoles to the corresponding benzimida salts without the need for further pre-functionalization. The transformation relies on a hypervalent iodine-mediated oxidative cleavage, followed by oxidative amidation, Hoffmann-type rearrangement, and cyclization. Since our previously developed method was not competent in transforming benzofurins, we were motivated to develop a method that would allow the carbon atom swap in those substrates. We envisaged an oxidative cleavage of the benzofurin double bond to give the corresponding hydroxyaldehyde, or ketone, as an intermediate. When we had a look into the literature, we realized that usually harsh reaction conditions are required for the oxidative cleavage of the benzofuran double bond. One major challenge for our method was therefore the development of a mild and versatile cleavage to increase functional group tolerance. We took inspiration from developed indoor cleavages, which were shown to proceed under blue light with the help of a photocatalyst. 
We next looked into reactions to introduce the desired nitrogen atom and quickly realized that the well-known imine or oxime synthesis from carbonyl compounds is the right way to go. This subsequent introduction of the nitrogen source further gave us a handle to develop this method into a chemodivergent strategy to either access benzoxazoles or esoxazoles through oxime or imine formation. Multiple methods are known to then access benzoxazoles or esoxazoles from imines. However, most of these methods are very substrate dependent and the resulting product ratio of benzoxazole to benzesoxazole varies. Our aim was to achieve a broadly applicable method which, depending on the formed intermediate, would undergo a Beckman rearrangement to access benzoxazoles or direct cyclization to the corresponding benzesoxazole. We started our optimization with the oxidative cleavage of the C2-C3 bond of benzofuran. While different methods to oxidatively cleave indoles have been extensively studied, the cleavage of benzofurans to the corresponding carbonyl compounds usually requires harsh conditions. We set out to investigate the oxidative cleavage of 3-methyl benzofuran as our model substrate. Inspired by previous reports on the photocleavage of indoles, we were pleased to see that the ruthenium catalyst in the presence of oxygen got us the cleave product in 75% yield. However, when we tried these conditions with a more complex 5N3 substituted benzofuran, we observed a drop in yield. Thus, we started screening different photoactive species. Photosensitizers such as rose bengal and eosine Y should be able to generate singlet oxygen which would engage in the oxidative C2-C3 cleavage. Using these, we obtained the desired cleave product in decent yields of around 50%. Being not satisfied yet, we tried different photocatalysts such as cyanoarine-based donor acceptor or an iridium-based photocatalyst. However, they didn't perform better. In the end, changing the ligand of the initial ruthenium catalyst from bipyridine to 110 phenantrolene did the trick. We observed the cleave product in 81% yield. Unfortunately, water was still needed for the desired transformation. We would like to avoid using water in our reaction because it could interfere with the next step in forming benzoxazoles or isoxazoles. Therefore, we screened different bases in the absence of water. Observing an overall trend, inorganic bases didn't promote oxidative cleavage, potentially due to solubility issues. We were pleased to see that the addition of diisopropylamine afforded the desired cleaved product in 80% yield. Having established a successful and general oxidative cleavage method, we focused on the ring closing sequence. We initially aimed to develop conditions for the synthesis of benzoxazole starting from 2-hydroxyacetophenone which can be easily obtained from the photocleavage of 3-methylbenzofuran. Gratifyingly, under acidic conditions, the treatment with hydroxylamine osulfonic acid, short HOSA, afforded the targeted benzoxazole in excellent yields. We propose that the ring closing proceeds via Beckman rearrangement from the intermediate oxime followed by cyclization. Since we sought to establish a chemodivergent C2N atom swap, we next targeted the corresponding three substituted benz isoxazole from the same starting material. First tries using hydroxylamine in the presence of methane sulfonyl chloride or under Mitsunobu conditions didn't give satisfying yields. Finally, we discovered that in situ generation of an imine intermediate followed by oxidation with n chlorosuccinamide to afford the n chloroimine favored the desired direct cyclization over rearrangement under basic conditions to give the targeted benz isoxazole in good yields. With the optimized conditions in hand, we combined both steps, the oxidative cleavage and the cyclization, and studied the functional group tolerance of our method. Electron withdrawing and donating groups in the 5 and 6 position were well tolerated as showcased by the successful conversion of substrates 1C to 1N. Halogens such as fluoro, chloro and bromo substituents performed well for benzoxazole and benzisoxazole formation. Alkenes or alkynes remained untouched giving the desired benzoxazole or benzisoxazole in good yields respectively. Generally the initial oxidative cleavage also tolerated 3-phenyl substituted benzofurans. 
the comparatively low yield for benzoxazole 2b was assigned to the competition in migration between the two hydroxy benzene ring and the phenyl group in the subsequent Beckmann rearrangement. In contrast, the respective benzisoxazole formation of 3b was not influenced. When we attempted the cleavage of an unsubstituted benzofurans, we noted that the developed method was not as efficient. We therefore decided to readjust the reaction conditions for benzofurans without a substituent in free position. We found that higher photocatalyst loading and less base gave us 78% NMR yield of the cleavage intermediate with our model substrate benzofurane. We then tested the ring closing step. Hydroxybenzaldehyde, which is commercially available, was used as a model substrate. We quickly found that under basic conditions, ROSA is able to affect the cyclization. We optimized the reaction and found a strong dependence on the solvent mixture while a ratio of 9 to 1 of acetonitrile to water would give almost no desired product, a solvent ratio of 1 to 1 gave us the benzisoxazole in quantitative yield. With the optimized conditions in hand, we started to study the functional group tolerance of these readjusted reaction conditions. Benzofurane was obtained in 69% NMR yield. We were pleased to see that benzofurane substituted in 5 and 6 position performed well. Alkenes are also tolerated under the reaction conditions. The structure of the benzisoxazole products containing an ester or carbamate group were unambiguously confirmed by single crystal X-ray. Sulfone groups, as well as halides, were shown to not interfere with the reaction and gave the desired products in good yields. Finally, we tested bergaptin a naturally occurring furanocumarine, and under the reaction conditions, the corresponding isoxazole could be obtained in 52% isolated yield. Finally, we would like to thank our amazing team. This work would not have been possible without them. Camille Pinar joined our group as a master's student and optimized the oxidative photocleavage during her stay. Filippo Santrini was a semester student in our group and took care of the non-substituted benzofurans by optimizing the reaction and help with the scope. We would also like to thank Professor Bill Morandi for his guidance on this project, as well as the entire Morandi group for their fruitful discussions. Thanks to the FCE Scholarship and ETH Zurich for providing funding for this research. And finally, we would like also to thank you, Matthew, for giving us this opportunity to present our work. We really hope you enjoyed this episode with us. Thank you, Anne and Stephanie, for this informative and interesting presentation. If you enjoyed this research spotlight episode, please leave subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter for newer episodes. Thank you for watching and see you in the next time.